what do you think is the greatest illness plague upon writing at the moment and maybe in that thoughts that you have about things like uh, writers writing their second novel after having such a successful first one um the, the, the plague on writing at present i think is probably fake what i call it in writing the fake orgasm in the writing that is the emotion that isn't earned the um i guess the imitated uh, writing that hasn't uh, I mean, I think in, in our early stages of writing, and maybe this applies to your second question about first and second books, we, we tend to fake it a bit anyway. What we're often doing is imitating the, the writers we love, uh, falling into their styles, um, and maybe we haven't, uh, we haven't lived enough ourselves. Um, and so we often, I think, write a kind of derivative writing, which, uh, which is necessary and is useful. You, know, you take bits and pieces from here and there, but I think often it lacks that central core uh, of, of earned heart. So. I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, I guess, st stuff that's borrowed that isn't, uh, isn't, isn't felt enough. When you look back on your, well, your career so far, what is the, the most fraudulent writing? Oh, I guess it's what we write in adolescence, all of us anyway, which is that, you know, when, uh, just like the kind of music we love, and maybe the poetry we love most in adolescence is um, you know, full of violent imagery, like Plath and Lowell and the confessional poets and people like that, which are, you know, are great poets, but. I think they appeal to the adolescent in us in those moments of great swirling emotions. Mm. But my, I guess my fakery was, I, so I write, wrote for a long time these very tight little minimal poems and I, very ironic poems. And in a way, okay, that was a defence against f committing the fake orgasm, mm. a very safe defence. Mm. I was never, never, in my clenched little poems there were never going to be any fake orgasms, but I hadn't earned that minimalism really. I mean, except in a, you know, in a laconic Australian way, it appealed to to the laconic Australian boy from the bush in me, but so uh, in some ways I think mine was the opposite problem. I wasn't um, maybe emotional enough. I wasn't. Uh, I was too constricted. I was a tight ass, and mm. uh, I probably could have done a little bit more. Your work as a, as a GP as well and doctor. I mean, would that be something that would be more restrictive? So would even make your writing as restrictive too? The more you work as a GP, I think. In any, if you work in medicine and and you see a lot of death, you do tend to, you have to harden your heart a bit to survive. And so that can be emotionally restricting, I guess, in other ways. And through medicine, through seeing people every day, you know, from all walks of life, I think it's taught me, you know, I <laughs> don't claim to be perfect at all mm. uh, in that sense, but um, it's made me a lot more interested in people who aren't interested in the things that I'm interested in. Mm. And that's absolutely essential for a novelist, which and in a novel, every character you know, a novel is a kind of democracy. Every character has a right to be heard and uh, is sort of uh, on an equal footing in a way. What about the ideas of truth and proof as related in, in writing? There are mysteries beyond um, you know, the material world of science and uh, certainly art is one way of apprehending them. You know, the mystery of, you know, why is there any material at all? You know, mm. uh, why is there stuff? It's, it seems more natural the idea that there'd be nothing, and for instance, or the mystery of consciousness emerging in this stuff. Well, you, well science can't actually get hold of that consciousness, and uh, um, poetry is a very interesting way of looking at that subject of consciousness, and if, if our consciousnesses are going to talk to each other, they're not going to do it through science, they're going to do it through, say, poetry, which I think poetry is the closest way we can get in language to the way we actually think, that is, in all its complexities, all its music. I mean, we don't just think rationally, as we know, we mm. think in images, we think in, in music, we think with dreams, we, we think things before we even realise we've thought them. And I think poetry, to me, became, at its fullest and richest, became the closest we could map that kind of consciousness, that kind of thinking, into words. The, the best things I've written have come, have come from things that have disturbed me terribly, either you know, for good or for bad. Someone told me recently, um, it was Joan London, said, yeah, someone always dies in your books. And, uh, well, I, you know, I guess that's right. Someone always dies in a life, you know, their own. I mean, but um, and s someone always al also seems to fall in love. You know, it might be with a gorilla or it might be whatever. But um, it's usually a love story. I, so I guess they're the two obvious, ex you know, cliched extremes. Mm -hmm. But I, I have, I have obviously seen a lot of death over the years, and uh, good death and you know bad death, if you can use those words. Mm -hmm. And those things do you know, mess with your head in in ways that uh, don't actually 
you're not even aware of for a long time. Like a good story. I mean, the great stories mess with our heads at a, an unconscious level even before. They tell us things about ourselves before we, we perhaps even realise consciously what they're telling us. And uh, profound experiences do the same things. Um, so there's that, yes, and that's certainly... I mean, I guess the more maybe the black humour is one way most doctors learn, mm. de uh, develop that defence against. And that's certainly been a feature even from those early thin poems. But in, in some ways that's also a, uh, that's, that's a s sort of safety wall and um, you, I mean trying to step more beyond that. The possibilities of miracles within science but then also miracles within love as being an illness but also being a cure. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it's, uh, well you do see miracles um, in medicine, what, what, well, what you would term miracles, but I, I guess the, the, um, the materialist in me, and I guess mostly I'm a materialist in the philosophical sense, you know, that mm. you know, everything is explicable through material. Um, I usually believe this an ex explanation. Do you think there are miracle writers? Like a fluke or a maverick or someone just mm. you can't predict. Like, well, a Les Murray would be a, c a case in point, I guess. It's, it's very hard to see how a gigantic talent like that Except I would explain it in, in terms of partial autism. It's, uh, I mean, I think uh, in someone like Les Murray. So I'd still be se searching, se searching, I guess, for a, a material explanation. However, the interesting thing, I mean, ma the material in a broad sense. I mean, if I look at the things I would regard of mine as the best things I've written, I, I'm not sure how I wrote them. And uh, they do seem, those few things, they seem very strange. They seem more intelligent or... They seem to know a hell of a lot more than I do, mm. and I'm not, you know, positing any mystical explanation. I, I think your unconscious obviously has profound powers that we're not quite aware of, and it'd be wonderful to be able to tap into that more often. Uh, but that's, in that sense, as a writer, you're reading, mm. you're, you're a reader reading this for the first time, and you don't. It's surprising you, and that's, and it, and once again, it's often surprising you at some deep semi-conscious level before it even surprises you consciously the worst sort of disease for a writer or a poet to get in terms of the loss of particular sorts of senses that are most relevant to the creation process of writing. Success and fame can probably, I suspect, um, I mean we see it hit the rock stars and the footballers of every kind of, and if you don't, uh, it doesn't always happen but if it, if it takes away with it, it takes away self-criticism then that's the end.